Here we are then, less than a week and a half until the Cheltenham Festival. Really exciting times, but you join us once again here on the Racing Postcast to preview the weekend action on ITV. We're here with Unibet, myself, Sam Hart, Maddie Plough, David Jennings, and of course, Ed Nicholson from Unibet. We've got nine races to get through this week, so we're going to have to rattle through all of these races. But before we do so, I just want to give a quick mention. We've got the official Racing Post Cheltenham Festival preview night this Sunday, 7 till 9 p.m. with Unibet themselves. We've got Dave Orton, Tom Siegel, Paul Keeley, Unibet ambassadors Nico de Boinville and Nicky Henderson. And of course, we've got Unibet's Brett Williams on the show. Just quickly, Ed, what are we to expect on Sunday night? Plenty of uh, boosts, extra special prices. We'll be speaking to Nicky live from Seven Barrows, so we'll have an update on all his Cheltenham horses. We know which one we're mostly talking about there. Um, but yeah, we've talked to our traders and we've got plenty of offers available. Uh, special information about um, a promotion or two as well that we haven't launched that we'll mention on that show too. So well worth looking at just for the uh, offers and, and, boost, and boosts. Absolutely. That's live 7 p.m. Racing Post and Unibet's YouTube channel. Do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that. Let's get straight into the racing. Then we'll catch up with the team. And we start off at Newbury for a couple of races, the first of which is a veterans handicap chase over three and a quarter miles. And Unibet have joint favourites here. Highland Hunter, Omar Moretti and Cophead are all seven to two. Fortescue, six to one. Commodore, 13 to two. Musical Slave, 17 to two. Secret Reprieve, 12 to one. 18's Bar. David Jennings, I'm going to come to you fresh off the preview circuit that's still going on. How are you and who do you fancy in this first race? I'm good, I'm good, I'm very good. Uh, I don't like veterans races at all. Um, I don't like them. Uh, I find them very tricky to solve because all the horses are regressing rather than progressing. So I think it is very tricky. Uh, I'm going to chance Commodore, who has the potential to produce these exceptional performances like he did back in 2021 when he won that grade three handicap chase at Cheltenham. He absolutely bowled it up from uh, Mr. Fog Patches that day. And he does go well after a break. Like I thought that day, I think he was on the back of nearly a year off. And he obviously is extremely tricky to train, but he was second to Slow, Snow Leopardess at Haydock in 2020 in a, in a really competitive handicap chase on the back of a 270 odd day break. And then, as I said, his last win at Cheltenham back in 2021 was on the back of the best part of a year off or certainly uh, 10 or 11 months. So I think he goes well fresh. He's obviously unpredictable, but I'm going to chance Commodore. OK, Commodore for David Jennings. Maddie Plough, I hope you're well. Who do you fancy in the 120? Yeah, all good. Thanks, Sam. Um, I'm interested in Secret Reprieve. I think a lot of people, he's a bit of a, an icky horse, um, but he's only run the six times since he won that Welsh National in 2021. That was off a mark of 134. He's now off just 130. Obviously, similar to Commodore, we haven't seen him in a while. But for his age, he's actually incredibly lightly raced. And if you go back to those um, two efforts in 2022-2023 at Chepstow, when he was second to Farinay and then third to Rapper at Cheltenham, those weren't bad efforts at all. I think you can forgive him being pulled up at Utoxter in the Midlands National last year. Obviously, that was a while back now, so I'm sure there's excuses for that. Um, and I just think, he, compared to some of the others in here, he's he's clearly very attractively treated. We know he's got a lot of ability. I like the jockey booking of James Bowen. Evan Williams' horses are going fine. And at the prices, I just thought he represented a little bit of value. I think Cyclop, um, last year's winner, Again, is another one who's competitively rated. He can go well as well. But Secret Reprieve for me, I think he could have a class edge if he returns to anything like his best form. OK, Secret Reprieve, 12 to 1 shot to kick off the postcast from Maddie. Ed Nicholson, I'm going to rely on you for any extra places, boost, whatever we've got in any of the races today. But who do you fancy in the 120? Well, this race is a really competitive affair. Unlike David, we love veteran races <laughs> well, yeah. at the unit. We sponsor the final of the three mile uh, brigade and we've obviously got the very new middle distance veterans chase series which has started off really well and um, we love these old horses and and punters do as well it's four to one the field old names um horses that have seen it and done it and it gives them a chance for one more day in the sun don't know what dave's talking about it's fantastic just, uh, just to clarify just to clarify i can see why people do love them and i can see why everybody adores them i'm just saying from from a punting perspective i just find them really tricky to sell yeah, no, that's fair enough. It's funny when we've spoken about them on the podcast, some racing post experts like them um, and some don't, don't they, Sam? Mm. We've had we've had differing views. Anyway, let's get back to this race itself. I thought Fortescue had a great chance. Um, he's been looking like he's going to win a race for some time, but mind you, he's been looking like he's going to win a race for some time, for some time. Um, so, 
you have to have that in the back of your mind. Three runs this year, dropped in the handicap since last year's Grand National, 143 then, 135 today. Looking at the odds, when I was looking at them, I, I made him about a four to one shot. Um, he opened up at nines and he's been backed uh, in the early skirmishes. Um, interesting one for me, Harry Cobden, booked to ride for Henry mm -hmm. Daly. Had a quick look, it's only happened 17 times and he's won four of those with a plus £7.50 for a £1 level stake. So I think he hasn't won for a long time, February 2022, but he's looked like, and he threatened at Chepstow. He ran really well uh, when second two runs back uh, at Sandown. Uh, didn't didn't particularly run well at Sandown, sorry, but he ran well at Haydock when, when finishing second. I, I think given the ground, given the distance, I'll give him one more chance. OK, fourth skew for Ed, like I say, well back six to one. Currently, let's move on to the 155 then, which is the Greatwood Gold Cup handicap chase. It's a premier handicap over two and a half miles, where currently Grander Dam is the 7-2 favourite of Unibet. High stakes player, four to one. Can do kid for the Paul Nichols yard. They love to win this race, nine to two. Jatol is 15 to Gemeran, 15 to nine to one about Bill Baxter and Heltonham and double figures. Bar these, Maddie, I'll kick things off with you this time around. Who do you like in this? Thanks, Sam. Well, you three know, and probably some of the watchers, listeners as well, that I can be guilty of overthinking some, some things sometimes. Um, I try and find big prices. I like to try and find value. But in this race, I must admit, I just think it's incredibly straightforward. Uh, the answer for me is high stakes player. I was at Kempton when he won his last race. That was after 458 days off the track. He beat Gemma on by nine lengths at Hereford before that. And just the way he travelled and jumped through the race was incredibly smooth. He only won by half a length in the end because he didn't do a tap when he hit the front. He's only gone up three pounds as a result. I think that's incredibly generous. And chatting to Tom Lacey afterwards, he was sort of saying he does nothing at home. He still thought he had plenty of fitness to work on. So naturally, to me, that suggests this horse, A, could have gone a lot further had he been pushed further. And B is going to be much improved for that run. 22 days later, he, uh, he can be tightened up plenty. I just think his mark is incredibly generous and he's got a really likable way of going. Um, some of these in behind, I suspect that they could have other targets. The likes of Bill Baxter, I think they'll be going and working their way back to the top. And with him, Gemma Rond, um, Panisha Williams horses, I'd still be a little bit concerned about their form. And Grandad Dam, yeah, he's he's solid enough, but he's still going to have to give weight to my selection, who's a bigger price, I think. Um, Kandu Kid, I wonder if his mark could be on the high side, given that his form hasn't worked out exceptionally well. But clearly, um, it's early days for a lot of these. And it's a good competitive race. It should produce a very smart horse for the spring festivals. Absolutely. A high stakes player. Keep things simple for Maddie. Currently four to one with uni. But Ed, I'll come to you next. Sorry, DJ. Um, I'm going to come to Ed. Who do you like in this? Okay, so the top weight, Jatwell, upwardly mobile. Some of these have had the best form in, in the past. He did get beat last time, but that was still an okay run um, at Cheltenham and went an unconsidered 18 to one shot back in a, a grade that he can win at. Um, 12 stone, dropped a pound for that race. Uh, interestingly, been backed in the early skirmishes as well. Um, has got the able assistance of Dylan Johnson on, mm. on board, who is really well worth his claim. Um, and I just thought against a lot of other horses that where you could put question marks against, he was he was worth going for. One horse I would I would mention is Helsingham. Now, this horse, I think, has got a race in him. I really do. Um, those people that know, I was speaking to the guys that look at cadence and um, stride length, and they were saying this horse has got everything that you would want for a three-miler, but he pulls. So I, I think I'm right in saying they don't want to extend him at the moment. They, they run him over two and a half. If you watched his race last week, he pulled and pulled and pulled, and yet he still almost won. He's got a horse. He's full, he's definitely ahead of his handicap, Mark, if he can settle. He's been backed as well this morning. But um, he would be my H-way. I'm slightly worried about him because he's going to win at some stage. But Jatwal is the selection. Hey, Jatwal as uh, the selection. Helton and one to keep an eye on. David Jennings, finish us off with the uh, race at Newbury. Yeah, I had to laugh when Maddie was saying that, uh, that she was keeping it really, really simple. And it was blatantly obvious. I was like, oh, well, obviously somebody else is going to tip can-do kid. Uh, but she didn't. She went for a high-stakes player. I just think with Can Do Kid, you have to factor in the, the Nichols factor because, you know, he won it in 2015, he won it in 2016, he won it in 2019, but even Tamarok de Matan was second to paint the dream in 2022. So he does put one aside, I think, for this race. And I just have it in the back of my mind that Can Do Kid is just a proper Newbury flat track specialist because 
Like all his best runs this season have been at Newbury. I thought he was really good when he beat Ferreira Bamboo in, in December. You know, I loved the way he hit the line that day. Now that was off 129, so he's 11 pound higher now, and it's a tougher task. And he was putting his play, in place by J Lo next time. But that was J Lo, that was my side, that was unexpected parity. It was a four runner race, but they're a quality quartet. I just think this is made from. I'd say very early on, as early as that first day in December, I'd say Paul Nichols thought this was his great Wood Gold Cup horse. So I'm relying on the trainer. It's a can do kid for me in the Great Wood Gold Cup. Can do kid for David Jennings. We now take a trip to Doncaster for the 235 there, which is the handicap chase just over two miles, where Tommy Zoska and On Public are the 5 2 joint favourites. Nube Negra is 3 to 1. Malistic 6 to 1. Numator is 11 to 1. Riders on the Storm 12s, and the outside of the lot is the big bite at 22 to 1. Back to you, David Jennings. Who in this one? Oh, I like Melistic here for Peter Nevin and Peter Nevin and, and Sam Twiston Davis. Uh, bounced right back to form last time over this course and distance behind Gabriel's getaway. And, you know, just watching the race again, Brian Hughes was just trying to get his confidence back the whole way. Like, come into the race having finished 6th of 6th, 7th of 8th, and pulled up. Like, so he'd been in brutal form altogether. Um, and it was just a real confidence booster. I actually thought... He nearly could have won the race. Like he was only beaten three lengths in the end. I thought that was a hell of a run. He's been put up a pound for it, but he's been, he was rated 150, you know, this time last year. Um, I think he's a good horse. I think a flat track like Doncaster and suit him. And I think he's he's one of the better bets on Saturday. It's uh, Melistic for me. Melistic for David Jennings. Ed, I'm going to come to you. Who are you in this one? I think it's a really competitive race. Three to one the field or thereabouts. And I think it's the old trouble, isn't it? Do you go for a horse that's been there and done it? and it's coming down into handicap class, or would you go for the horse that's improving and there might be some more to come, in my mind anyway. And the horse that's been there and done it is Nubre Negra. I mean, we know him, he's running grade ones or grade twos for the, each of his races this season. Um, last time he ran in a handicap, I was interested to see, I, I don't remember him running in a handicap, but he hasn't over fences, but he did as a as a hurdler. Um, and I did note it, but now I can't see my notes, but he did it as a hurdler some time ago. March 2019 was the last time he was in a hurdler race. Um, cheap pieces on for the first time has been disappointing. So do you go for that or do you go for the up and up and coming horse? I'm going to go for the up and coming horse and that's on public uh, or um public, uh, probably um, number four on the card who has only had three runs, one twice. And probably uh, his second was the best of the lot when he was uh, second uh, uh, rated one, three, nine to Persian time, um, who's a good horse. So I'm going to go for the up and coming horse uh, on public uh, to do to do the business here. On public for Ed Nixon and Maddie Plough finishes off in the 235. Yeah, I found this really tough. Um, I can see DJ's case for Malistic. I was also interested in Nube Negra. I thought maybe they'd be gearing him up for a grand annual or something like that, but he wasn't entered. Interesting that he's now back in handicap company. Um, but like Ed, I think On Public is the interesting one because he's the only one who's really young, progressive and upwardly mobile. His uh, efforts this season have all been incredibly consistent on race and post ratings, 143, 142, 142. His uh, handicap mark's been left alone after his last run to Persian time. Probably don't think he was seen to his absolute best there, but there are bits and pieces of, of his form to suggest that he could still be really attractively weighted. Um, the Arkle trial, the grade two that he won, OK, he was a fortunate winner because JPR won unseated at the last. I'm still feeling the agony from that. Um, but he beat a horse in Petit Tonnerre who is probably going to run a very big race at the Cheltenham Festival wherever he goes. And at the prices, I think I'd rather side with on public, but it's a really tricky one. A couple of votes for on public and one vote for Melistic. Moving on to the 310, which is the Mayor's Novices Heard or Listed contest just over three miles here. And Luna Discovery tops the market at Unibet really well backed at two to one. Ottazini, seven to two. Gay Legacy is nine to two. Don't You Want Me is 11 to two. Nine to one about Lightning Marla. And then we're looking at double figures bar these. And Maddie, I'm going to come straight back to you on this one. Who wins this? Oh, no, I was hoping you wouldn't because I found this <laughs> particularly difficult to, to solve. Listen, I think the case for Luna Discovery is um, incredibly clear and it's not surprising to me that she's a short price given her form. She's been incredibly consistent and is still progressing. So I think she's got a really good chance. Others that I thought were interesting were Maleficent um, for John Joy Neal, last time out winner, hasn't been seen in 128 days. But there's real sort of promise behind the way that she's been campaigned, I think. And there'll be more to come from her. And a crazy one. When I first looked at this race on Monday, 
I thought for Gina was interesting. She is a huge price. Um, and in any normal listed race, I think you'd be looking at her and thinking, well, she's rated 102. She's got absolutely no chance. Um, but again, incredibly consistent. She's got form actually behind Luna Dis Discovery um, back in her bumper days. Um, she's been running at tracks like Fakenham, Plumpton um, and doing really well. But I just think this more galloping circuit will suit her. She's a very strong stayer. She's very genuine. And she beat a really well handicapped horse last time out in Hermes Legree. Um, it was 11 to 10 favourite that day. It's a seven year old for, for Robbie Llewellyn. I am convinced that horse is still incredibly well in off his mark. He was going really well when he came down at Southall um, not so long ago, then won at Huntingdon and then was surely going to win at, uh, at Fakenham. But for Gina, just incredibly brave and gallant. I think this track could really suit her and she could put in a career best, but whether that'll be good enough to trouble the first couple in this, I'm not sure. It's, it's a tough one. It is a tough one for Gina. Yeah, around 28 to 1, a massive price there. Uh, one spent to keep an eye on Bryony Frost and Lucy Wadham there. DJ, to you, I know you're in a, a little bit of a rush today, but we, we'll get your thoughts on each race. Yeah, I, I think we're an awful bother if uh, a mayor rate 102 wins a list at race. But but Maddie has a point, like any of these could win. And mm. it's it's a pretty poor contest. I'm going to give Lightning Maller another chance. She's had a wind operation. Um, when she won her point at Drummahan, she beat uh, Emily's Choice. And Emily's Choice came out and won a bumper for Donald McCain and won a point afterwards as well. So I say Emily's Choice is not too bad. Lightning Maller was very impressive that day when beating Emily's Choice for Benny Walsh. Uh, and I thought when she won her maiden hurdle at Hereford, I thought we have something really nice in our hands here. I thought she was quite impressive. Last time at, at Warwick, she was she was really heavily supported into odds on to beat either or, but she made a noise that day. Now that's obviously a big worry. She's obviously got wind issues, but uh, up to three miles now, maybe she was just taking off her feet a little bit over two mile three around Warwick. She's back up and trip here. It's such a poor race. Like she has potential and she may just be worth chancing after having a wind operation. Okay, there we go. So that's three ten. We got Ed Nixon. We still got your opinion on the race. Who do you like? I thought this was to to, to coin a phrase from Maddie earlier on was quite simple. Um, I've gone for Luna Discovery. Uh, has all the form in the race that you need. The horse, don't you want me? Takes her on again, and um, I don't. It's quite difficult to see how Luna Discovery is not going to beat. Don't you want? Don't you want me? Nine pounds better off for a yeah. neck over this extra distance will probably be all up Luna Discovery's um, area and, and and positivity rather than for Don't You Want Me. So I made it between the uh, Luna Discovery, Otzini and Gay Legacy, which surprise, surprise are the first three in the market. But um, yeah, I thought Luna Discovery was still improving. I think she's a mare well worth up to this uh, listed ability. And um, I think the extra distance will, will suit her the way she ran at Carlisle last time. So Luna Discovery around about uh, two to one, nine to four. There we go. I vote for the favourite from Ed Nicholson. The final race from Doncaster we're covering is the 340, which is the Grimthorpe Handicap Chase over three and a quarter miles. A class two event where some scope is 11 to four. Under supervision, six to one. Java point 15 to two. Eight to one about Earn River. Certainly red is nine to one. And again, double figures bar these. David Jennings, the final race we cover from Doncaster. Who for you? I think that it's the right favourite and I think he's the most likely winner. I thought it was... It was quite emphatic last time when he was at Doncaster. You know, he was he was only nudged out by Gavin Sheehan that day to win. Uh, beat two shots of tequila, who's franked the form since a Catterick prior to that. Uh, just a nice, young, unexposed chaser who's, I'd say, a long way ahead of his mark off 125 here. So some scope for me. Some scope for David Jennings. Ed Nicholson, to you next. Some scope for you? Uh, yeah, ditto. Some scope lifts up to his name. Only had three chases. One, two, looks a, a step ahead of the handicapper and has already shown his liking for Doncaster. Okay, we haven't got many odds on favourites this week, so it's not going to be easy to get a hat-trick. But Maddie Player, are you going to make it a hat-trick with an 11-4 to shot? I am. I think he's, oh. the, he's the obvious one. Um, I don't like going for short-price horses, but I think he's you know well justified his place in the market. If you want one to fill the frame, maybe consider Charlie Uber Rise, a um, decent runner in the Great Yorkshire last time. Um, could still be progressing for a for a, a stable that know what they're doing when they get a decent horse in Diane Sayer. But the same applies to Richard Hobson. He's incredibly shrewd. And yeah, some scope. He's got the form. He can jump. He's well named. And I think he should do the business. I, I should go. I should say, right. Sam, I, I, I've been very poor. I've not given any information. Um, this is an extra place race. So that each way selection may be one to play here. Uh, an extra place in the, uh, the Greenthorpe with Unibet. 
That's right. I would have played some sort of VT there Ed, after the market. So don't worry about that. We'll have it up while we're, we're previewing the race. So there we go. That is Newbury and Doncaster. Shortly after this, we'll be looking at four races from Kelso. Welcome back to the second part of the racing postcast. Sam Hart, Maddie Plow, David Jennings and Ed Nicholson spinning you through the weekend action on ITV. We head to Kelso for four races now and the 142 is where we kick things off. It's a handicap hurdle over two mile, five furlongs. It's so fury with Unibet at the time of recording the four to one favourite. The Kaluki Kid is nine to two. Serious Operator, five to one. Pentland Hills, 11 to two. Brewing Up a Storm, 13 to two. Seven to one and bigger the rest. This is, again, like most of the races we've covered, awfully competitive. And Ed Nicholson, you can kick us off. Well, competitive, five to one the field or thereabouts. Nine runners, perfect race for Unibet to offer the money back second or third offer if your horse comes second or third you, you'll get your money back please see the site for the full details and what a race it is i mean my eye was immediately drawn to good old pentland hills who you know we all know has won a couple of grade ones as a juvenile not gone plain sailing since then but he ran really well last time i thought second uh, when traveling really smoothly which he hasn't done for some time uh, nico and nicky go up there with a few good chances at kill so they don't often go go to Kelso, so that'll be interesting. And I thought he was well worth trying, given that we sh he showed a return to form on that race last time out. And I like the fact that he, he travelled through the race. The only problem I would have is the stable form, um, which is a big problem. Uh, of their last 12 runners in 14 days, they've had one winner, but more problematic for, for those looking to have a bet on Henderson's horses, seven of them have pulled up. And we all know about Constitution Hill and the mucus going to be tested as well so there is a slight worry about the stable form but um I'm going on, to on that okay. Ed, on that okay. point we have we have some breaking news a statement from nikki henderson on tw uh, tw i was going to say twitter on x the result of the blood test taken this morning goes quite a long way to explaining his disappointing performance at kempton on tuesday and confirms that he had significant degree of inflammation the figures themselves suggest he is definitely under the weather and we will need to repeat the test on Monday in the hope that the situation improves. We intend to scope him again tomorrow morning, but it appears that the blood test is a more conclusive barometer and the one we need to concentrate on. This is probably not what we were hoping for, but at least it tells us exactly where we are. So it's looking increasingly unlikely, I think, that we're going to see Constitution Hill in the champion hurdle. Which is a it's a massive shame, and um, I, I want to say first of all, Nicky Henderson's communication with regards to this has been absolutely superb, especially on X. We've seen the kind of printed sheets that have come out, and it's been brilliant. And um, I'm really looking forward to hearing Nicky's thoughts on the Cheltenham yeah. preview on on Sunday night, and he'll give more information into the stable form. I'm sure, the questions will be asked, but we'll be uh, wishing Constitution Hill all the best, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we might still see him in the Unibet Champion Herd on day one of the festival. Um, who have I not done so far? Maddie, can I come to you for the 142? Who do you like? <laughs> I'm going to wave at you, Sam. Um, yeah. This is really tough. I think the, the horses at the, the first three in the market are really nice types um, and could, could progress again. The one that I was drawn to, though, is Serious Operator, the course and distance winner for Lucinda Russell. It was really eye-catching run, actually, in the Lanzarote hurdle. Um, bit of a messy race, that, but he actually stayed on best of all to finish fifth behind JJ Riley, beat Pentland Hills before that. Um, and that form's obviously working out well from Kempton. You've had Nami and Lyon go on and win um, and Mott Hill as well in behind. I think he's he's progressive and I think he can he has been a bit in and out in the past, but he's got a good win record overall and he's clearly putting things together. This testing finish at Kelso should suit him. We know it's suited him in the past because he's won there. Um, and I just think there could be room off his mark and it doesn't harm his chances that Patrick Wodge takes off three pounds as well. He's an incredibly capable young rider. Course and distance winner, serious operator for Maddie, David Jennings, the 142. It's, 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 it's you know, when you have Bruno up a storm and Pentland Hills in the same race, you're kind of going, oh, Jesus, what kind of a race <laughs> is this? Uh, Bruno up a storm, obviously, I'd say, was trained for the National Spirit Hurdle, which was called off. He's turning up here, but he's off 147. Like, I still think it's O'Fury as well, handicapped off mark 130. I thought he looked much more kind of professional last time at Wincanton. So I think he might be, follow, be able to follow up. He's only five pounds higher for that Wincanton win. So it's O'Fury. 
Yeah, so Fury for David Jennings. Let's move on swiftly to the 217. The Premier Novices Hurdle, grade two over two and a quarter miles. Django Bay, probably the shortest prize favourite we've had on the postcast today. 13 to eight favourite. Alnaham, five to one. Personal Ambition, 11 to two. Brucio, six to one. Cannock Park is nine to one. Double figures about the rest of the field. Is this a good favourite, David Jennings? Uh, yeah, I think and that's, he's rated 139. You can certainly see why he's favourite. He's beaten favour and fortune in a grade one. Um, so he is like sure look it's 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 a bit like it's a bit like the the whole Henderson thing like we'll talk about on the control later but like with when you've got a horse like like Django Boy if you knew the stable was bombing if you knew the horse was at the peak of his powers he'd win uh, and you'd be saying God that's a great price because he's done it and I'd say Handstands is a very good horse and I didn't think James mm. Bowen gave Django Boy a good ride at Huntington either I thought Harry Cobden really outrode him in that race. Uh, so I think Django Boy is the most likely winner. Uh, the one that's too big of a price, though, is surely personal ambition. Um, I thought he was impressive against Inu Mashan last time. I know they think a bit of the runner-up. And, uh, you know, he's already beaten Jinko Blue. I think those two horses, Jinko Blue and Django Boy, are so easy to mix up because they're in the same colours, they're the same trainer. They start with the same first name and second name. So it's a really tricky one. But he beat Jinko Blue at Warwick. They think a bit of him, I think a bit of him, and I think at a, a decent each way of price, I think he's probably the alternative to, to Django Bike. Yeah, this is all around the stable form. It really is interesting with regards to these favourites for Nicky Henderson. Um, Ed Nicholson, are you going to be with the favourite? Well, I'm the same as DJ, really. I mean, he, he is the most obvious choice in the race, got the best form in the race. But I, I'm... It's a race for me to look at trainers as much as horses. And the Nicky Henderson trainer form and the, the Ben Pauling trainer form are the antithesis of each other. Ben Pauling mm. has had a fantastic last 14 days, six wins from 17 runners. Nicky, unfortunately, has had one, one winner from 12 runners and seven of them are pulled up. So at 15 to 8, I know I tipped up a horse of his before, but that was 6 to 1. 15 to 8, I think I'll swerve and go on personal ambition, who, let's face it, has been putting in some good performances. Still got a lot to prove as well. He is, he is tending to go um, to his, uh, to hang to hang to his left, is it? Which isn't which isn't great. Um, but uh, he has won two, and he's got any amount of improvement in him. And around about seven to one, I notice he's been well backed as well since we put our prices out. And personal ambition would be, would be the selection. He does take a keen hold as well. So there are a couple of negatives, but... I'd rather be on that six than than the favourite at, at just under twos. Yeah, it has been really well supported. Personal ambition. Maddie Playle finishes off in the two seventeen. Yeah, initially I was drawn to Cannock Park. Um, he's going to have to give weight to plenty of these um, based on his third um, in the form. But he'd have a really good chance. Django Bay won that day, favour and fortune second. I think that making headway in behinds won since as well. So I think that's decent form. But I have to admit, I, I'm with the guys. I think personal ambition um, has just got a really likeable profile. Ben Pauling's had a superb season and he told me at Ascot the other day he's got seven or eight novice hurdlers who are better than anything he's had in the last sort of good while. Um, and I, I, I think personal ambition is definitely one of those. He needs to build on, on what he's shown already, but he's got a, a likeable profile and Again, he he has to um, he gets uh, weight from Cannock Park, so that just sways things in uh, his favour for me. I couldn't have the favourite at all, really. Um, I agree with DJ in that um, it probably wasn't James Bone's finest hour in the Sydney Banks last time, um, but at the same time, with the Henderson form and that cloud over the top of them at the prices, I would much rather back a, an upwardly mobile horse, and personal ambition certainly is that. Okay, personal ambition, definitely the one to be with there in the 217. The 250 then at Doncaster is the more battle hurdle. This is a handicap hurdle over two miles. We're under control. Favourite for Nikki Henderson again here, three to one. Black Hawk Eagle, nine to two. Skycutter, 13 to two. Bingo and Salsada, both nine to one, 11 to one, and bigger the rest. Uh, a big win bet here for, for Paul Keeley looking at the paper today. Uh, Maddie Plow under control. What do we make of this one? Yeah, the stable form with under control is is a little bit of a worry for me. Obviously, we know she has that Iberico Lord form in the locker and it was a good run behind Ash Road Diamond last time, but I'm not convinced this track will necessarily be her bag. Presumably, they're hunting the 100 gram bonus with her. I think Kerry Lee is one of the most underrated trainers in Britain and probably in Ireland as well. Um, 
she does incredibly well with the raw materials she gets and she always seems to operate at a very good strike rate that's no exception at the moment as she's three from four in her last 14 days and um, Blackhawk Eagle from Nolmead has got a really interesting profile won two of his three races since joining Kerry Lee um, only ever really seems to do enough when he hits the front and often comes with smooth runs from the back of the field Georgie Girl, a horse he beat at Wincanton earlier this uh, season, back in December, has won a couple of races since. And then last time at Hereford, um, Blackhawk Eagle beat a decent horse with Nigel Twiston Davis, is called Mr. McKay. Obviously, that form's not going to be good enough here, but I just get the impression that there's plenty more under the locker and getting lumps and lumps of weight from under control. I can see him skiving into this. Okay, hey, Blackhawk Eagle for Maddie then. David Jennings, under control. You mentioned the horse earlier. No for you? No, an absolute yes for me, I think. Oh. Like, uh, you're just really, it's just stable form here. I think it's, is, is she 7 to 2? Is that right? R- around that, yeah, 7 3 like, to 1, 7 2, yeah. If, if you knew she was right and if the stable was okay, that is, that's one of the better 7 to 2 shots of the year. Like, because she has to be well handicapped. Like, she just simply has to be. She has to be very good as well. Like, everything about her just suggests she's in a different league to the horse she's running against here. Like, she's, she beat a Biracle Lord at Sandown last season. Uh, you know, last time she she split Astro Diamond and Gala Marceau. And like the likes of like Stainsby Girl, who was hammered into fifth that day, comes out at, uh, at Haydock next time and wins by a dozen lengths, like, and is now rated 136. So, like, she just simply has to be well handicapped. She just has to win this race. Like, you're just going... Like, how is she seven to two? It's just it seems to be completely priced up on stable form. I, I can't figure it out. I don't know why she's such a big price. I don't know how, what would need to, like she'd obviously need to be under the weather, I think not to be hugely competitive here. And um, I think she's the best horse in the race. And um, I think she's seriously well handicapped off mark of 138. I like her a lot. There we go. Tell me who your nap is without telling me who your nap is this week. Basically they're from DJ Ed Nicholson. Uh, another vote for under control. Well, everything that's been said before is true, and I agree with under control does look like she should win, but that stable form, and that's why she is seven to two, let's face it, is is a little bit worrying. She's in the mid market where a short price favourite I would go against six, ten to one, you'd have a chance. So I think I'm gonna duck this race for a selection because she would be the selection, but the price puts me off a little bit. But I would say to those that are gonna be supporting the Nikki Henderson train mayor that Nikki has done particularly well in this race. He's won three of five attempts. But do you remember the first time he ever tried to win it? It was a horse called Zaynar, which got beaten at 1 to 14 in 2010. <laughs> was that a so Thursday, beware. wasn't it? Beware, yeah, beware. They do get beat along odds on at 1 to 14. But um, yeah, he does like this race. I don't think he's run it as a, in, 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 as a handicap. There have always been non handicap races that, that he's raced them in. But uh, this horse uh, under control is still in the Unibet champion hurdle, 150 to 1. Mayor's hurdle, 33 to 1. And interestingly, DJ is 12 to 1 to win the county hurdle. Bingo. Mm. There you go. There you go. Probably has to win this to get into the county hurdle. I'm not sure if that's true, but probably about right. Um, the 325, then the final race we're covering. It's the Premier Chase, just shy of three miles here. Mombeg Genius top in the market, 13 to 8. I write 3 to 1. Elvis Mail, 9 to 2. Thunder Rock, 13 to 2. Manila Drama, 7 to 1. Leveronomy is 14 to 1. And the outside of the lot is Cooper's Cross at 50 to 1. David Jennings, our final race that we want to rattle through. Is Mombeg Genius going to win this? Asher, like, my up in the ante colleague Johnny Deneen thinks it's an absolute certainty. Mombeg Genius thinks he's completely different class to this lot. I'm not so sure, to be honest with you. Um, I think he's got a chance. Does he deserve to be favoured? Maybe he does slightly on, on his reputation and his run in the Ultima last year. Uh, but I thought I right was really rock solid here. Like, he hasn't been winning races, and it's a long time since he's won, but... Like, holy God, he basically won a Chepstow. Like, I think he just pulled himself up that day. I think he was beaten at 101. Like, he, he did everything right and, and just didn't win. Uh, he did everything wrong in the last 50 yards. But last time at Warwick in, in, in that veterans chase, I thought it was another really rock-solid run. Like, you know, he, he crashed into one fence at a crucial stage. And, uh, like, he was still, I think, 10 or 12 lengths clear of Milgreen and third and Ramses to Tele and all them. And they pulled nicely clear himself and Sam Brown. I think this track suits him, and I think he's going to give Mombe Genius his fill of it. I'd be, I'd be keen on a big run for my right. All right, three to one for David Jennings. Maddie Playle, who for you in the final race we cover on the postcast? 
I like that case for I right. I just wonder whether he's hard to win with these days, isn't he? I mean, he's been a bit unlucky, but um, I've got to admit, I don't have a really strong view on this. I thought if he could bounce back, then Cooper's Cross could be quite interesting. He's well handicapped on his old form, run some really big races in these staying handicap chases, but he hasn't shown anything like his best for a while. Um, so I'll probably leave this one alone. No worries at all. And Ed Nicholson finishes off with the 325 at Kelso. Well, I Wright's running three veteran handicap chases and now runs in this race. So they're, they're Love well the over. veterans chases. It can't be <laughs> a good veterans chase. That's what I was saying. We were just talking about that earlier on. Um, so obviously had a chance and you're quite right. I mean, I don't know how he got beat at Chips. I was there that day and we just turned around. We all thought he'd be one. Um, but I'm going to go for the, the core specialist, Elvis Mal, who's uh, won five of 12 races at Kelso and has had a further three seconds, three two thirds and two fours he loves the track he, he's for some reason certain horses love certain tracks and elvis mel loves this course uh nine to two five to one for the evergreen 10 year old uh dropped to, i think he's been dropped to pounds since his last race he will have to be at his very best he's not he's only ever one off one four three this is one four five but given that it's his favorite track i love elvis so elvis is the selection Okay, I was Mel for Ed Nixon to finish things off. We're going to be back shortly after this. We'll rattle for any other selections on that, and then we'll be saying goodbye. Want betting on the horses to be anything but flat. With an app that impresses every time out. You're on. Want to watch live streaming of races in the UK, Ireland, and around the globe? And get a chance to win even bigger with three uni boosts every day on any horses you want. Unibet, you're on. Welcome back to the final part of the racing postcast. Joined by Maddie Plow, David Jennings, Ed Nicholson and Sam Hart in the hosting chair here for our Unibet preview of the ITV action this weekend. We have spoken off air and there are no other selections this weekend. So we're going to crack straight in to the weekend naps for this weekend. I'm going to start with David Jennings. He's going to tell us that under controls his nap this week. <laughs> <laughs> Your first loser of the weekend, Sam. No, I, I do. I do really fancy under control. Or under control, and I, I think if she's right, she'll win. But uh, I'm going to go to the 4:23 at Navin on Saturday, the Webster Cup. It's a Grade Two. Journey with me gets bottomless ground. What Journey with me needs hasn't ran for a long, long time, but uh, just the perfect fit for Journey with me. I'd be bitterly disappointing if it, if it doesn't win this. Getting a little bit away from Ashley Meadow and the refrain fighting fit, fit and lucid dreams. You'd want to be winning this journey with me, 4.23 now on Saturday. Okay, there we go. Maddie Plough, your nap this weekend? Yeah, keep things simple and go big or go home, Sam. In the 155 at Newbury, the Bet Victor Greatwood Gold Cup, 100 grand race, a really nice progressive horse with a great record in it. High stakes player has plenty more to come. I'd be surprised if he wasn't very, very close to things at the business end and can go on to have a very nice spring campaign. OK, high stakes player for Maddie. I'm going to take a bit of a chance. The weekend, you can take a bit of a chance. And the 142 at Kelso, it's the handicap hurdle there. I think brewing up a storm is going to probably go and win this. Big price, around 7-1. to one. But behind Bob Ollinger and Marie's Rock the last day, I thought that was a really decent run. I'd imagine that the national spirit hurdle at Fontwell was their primary aim for this horse. He won it last year. Obviously, that got called off. They've come here. I don't think it's the strongest handicap hurdle. Carrying top weight. But I do think this horse will go very well. So 7-1 to one about brewing up a storm in the 142 at Kelso. And Ed Nicholson, finish up off with your nap. I'm going to go with an old-timer, appropriately. Uh, I'm going to go for Fortescue in the 120 at Newbury. Um, price and form dictate he has to be my nap. Around about 9-1 to one at time of recording. I'll probably expect that to be nearly half those odds come the time he races. Uh, Harry Cobden, a very interesting jockey booking for trainer Henry Daly, only had seven. 17 rides for Henry. He's one on four of them with a big profit if you back level stakes. Uh, and although this horse hasn't won since February 22, he's run some good races this season. He likes soft ground. He's a staying machine. And he's more importantly, he's been dropped in the handicap down to 135. And he was as big as 143 when he ran in last year's Grand National. So Fortescue is the nap. Fortescue to finish things off with our naps. Then. And that's it for this week's show. Big thanks, as always, to Maddie Plough, David Jennings and Ed Nixon. And don't forget, tune in Sunday night, 7pm, for the official Racing Post and Unibet Cheltenham preview. It's going to be massive. Really looking forward to that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you again next week for another postcast. Thanks for watching.